The practice quiz on naming and formulas focuses on coming up with the names given the formulas, the formulas given the names, determining whether a formula is empirical or molecular and supporting that answer, and then being able to count all the atoms in a compound. In this case, these are both hydrated compounds, making it a, a little bit more difficult. So to start off, we're going to be naming from the formula and we're going to follow the steps we discussed in class that will actually work for any situation. So the first thing we're going to do in number one here is name this first element. And if you need to look in table S, go ahead and do that. I'd rather you didn't guess. So that's chromium. And I'm going to leave a space just in case it requires the Roman numeral and the name, the only time it's required is if that element has more than one positive oxidation number. So we'll check that in a second. Now we're going to, after the little space, name the second one. And this one being just a single element versus being a polyatomic ion like I see in number two, we're going to have to change the ending to IDE. So instead of sulfur, we're going to call this sulfide. Now we check. We're going to check our periodic table and see if chromium has more than one positive oxidation number, and it sure does. So we're going to have to figure out what that oxidation number is in order to name it, because that's the number that's going to go in the Roman numeral. So we're going to figure that out based on what sulfur is. Here's sulfur in the periodic table here. Since it's a second element, it has to be negative. And it only has the one negative, and it's negative 2. So it's negative 2. And there's a couple ways you can figure out now what chromium's oxidation number is. One, if you recognize that this number and this number are the same, except for the fact that the oxidation number has a charge, then this number and the oxidation number of chromium would be the same. Or you could do the math. You're never going to get it wrong if you do the math. So there are three atoms of sulfur, each with a negative 2, so that totals negative 6. Our entire compound here needs to total 0. That's the point in elements bonding with each other. So chromium must total plus 6. Now there's only two atoms of chromium here, so it's not as if the chromium has a charge of plus 6. Each atom of chromium would be something that adds up to 6. So the math is just taking the 6 and dividing by the subscript on chromium, which is 2. So each chromium is a plus 3. That is the number we're going to put in parentheses here. And it needs to be a Roman numeral. And if you like to put in the bars, you can do that. I don't typically do that. All right, on to number 2. Um, I see three elements here, and whenever we see three elements, we know we're going to need table E. I've pulled that out here at the bottom. What's really nice in this one is that the polyatomic ion is already in parentheses, so it's kind of identified for you. But if you remember, there's only three positive polyatomic ions. All the rest are negative, so you can typically name the first thing and then go ahead and find the rest as a polyatomic ion in table E. So we're going to, just like the last one, we're going to name the first, and it's barium. Oops. And then we're going to leave a space just in case. And then we identified we had a polyatomic ion. So we're going to look through table E in order to find that. And here it is right here. ClO3 is chlorate. Be very careful. There's actually four different ones with chlorine and oxygen, so they look very similar. But we have chlor-8. It has a subscript of 3 on the oxygen. So we put chlor-8. And now we need to go back and check and see if barium has more than one positive oxidation number. And here's barium here. It's a group 2 metal, and it does not have more than one. So we're done. On to the next one. This is one of those positive polyatomic ions we see at the beginning of table E. So we just name that, what we see in table E, and it's ammonium. And we're not going to have to worry about leaving a space, but you always leave a space between the two words. 
And then the second thing is just a simple element. So we're going to change the ending just like we did in number one to IDE, and it's ammonium sulfide. Number four, nickel. Leave a space just in case. Fluoride, not fluorine, fluoride. And now when we check nickel to see if it has more than one positive, it sure does. So we have to figure out what it is. We're going to do that based on fluorine, which is a negative one. But there are two of them for a total of negative two. So in order for this to equal zero, nickel must be a plus two. There's only one atom of it, so that whole charge goes on nickel. And that's what we put in the parentheses. It's nickel two fluoride. Next one, W is tungsten. We're going to leave a space just in case. Another sulfide. And now we check tungsten right here. Only one positive, even though it's in the transition. So no other, no other thing to do with that name. Next we have vanadium. And I see three, and look at table E then, and it's already in parentheses, making it a bit easier. So we're going to look for SO4, and here it is down here. Careful, there's a couple of these as well. This is just SO4, so it's sulfate. I'm going to still leave that space. And now we check vanadium. Does vanadium have more than one positive oxidation number? Here's vanadium, it sure does, it has four. So we have to figure out what the oxidation number on vanadium is, and we're going to do that based on sulfate. Sulfate, when you found it in table E, you saw it was negative two. And there are two sulfates for a total of negative four. It needs to total zero overall on the compound, so vanadiums must be plus one, but there's only one vanadium, so it must be plus four. Roman numeral four is IV. All right, on to the next one, number seven. Be careful, it is manganese, not magnesium. Manganese. Should be an N, not an H. And then phosphorus becomes phosphide. I'm not going to take off if you said phosphoride, because you did drop the ending and add IDE, but this one actually cuts it off two syllables back. All right, and manganese, when you find it in the periodic table, sure does have more than one. So we have to say what it is, and we're going to do it based on phosphorus. So phosphorus actually has more than one positive, but there's only a single negative option there. And it's pretty small on mine, but it's negative three. So if you wanted to do the math, that would be negative six. It has to total zero, so manganese total must be plus six. And since we have three of them, we're going to take that six, divide by three, and we get plus two. And it's that two that goes in the name as a Roman numeral. Next, rubidium. Leave a space just in case. Bromide. And we're going to check rubidium. Here it is here. Group one only has one oxidation number, so we're done. Next one, we do see three elements, so we do have a polyatomic ion. It's not going to be the positive part because it's none of these, so it must be the second half. So I'm going to go ahead and name K, which is potassium. And then leave a space, and now we need to find CN in table E. And here it is right here. CN is cyanide. So we're going to write cyanide. And potassium has just one positive, so we're done. Next, boron, leave a space, iodide. No, it sounds funny, but that's correct. And boron is right here. It only has one positive, so we're done. And that's it for the naming part of the quiz. On to the next section where we're going to come up with the formula from the name. I think it's easier when they do give us the oxidation number and the name. I don't have to figure that out then. Osmium is OS. They're telling us in the name that it's a plus four, and it's with phosphorus. 
when you look up its negative oxidation number right here, which we just looked it up a minute ago, it's negative 3. The two numbers do not cancel out. They do not have a common factor. So removing the signs, we're actually going to swap and drop. So the 3 is going to come down and it's going to be the subscript on OS. And the 4 is going to come down and become the subscript on and that's all there is to it. Next one, nitrogen is just N, it's a plus 4. Bromide is Br. We look up, it's a negative oxidation number, it's negative 1. The two numbers don't cancel out, they don't have a common factor, so we can swap and drop once again. The 4 comes here, and the 1 would be on nitrogen, but we don't write 1's. Next, beryllium is BE, and we didn't get an oxidation number on that one, so we're going to have to look that up. And beryllium is a group 2 right here, so it has a plus 2. And then perchlorate, you could try finding that in the periodic table. You're never going to, and one of the hints is it's ending in ATE. If it were a simple element like the other ones, it would end in IDE. So perchlorate will be in table E, and here it is down at the bottom of the first column. It's ClO4. My suggestion, always put that in parentheses, because then if you need to do a swap and drop, you're, you're not going to mess that up. So we have ClO4. The oxidation number is also given in the table here. It's minus 1. So our two oxidation numbers do not cancel out. They do not have a common factor, so we're going to swap and drop. That 2 has to be outside the parentheses. The 4 would be inside. If you have it any other way, it's, it's wrong. Next, we have magnesium. Magnesium is a group 2 right here, and it has a plus 2 oxidation number. And then thiocyanate, again, a clue we're going to have to look in table E, and it's not near cyanide, is it? No. There it is, way over in the second column, about two-thirds of the way down. Thiocyanite is SCN, and it's a negative one. So put it in parentheses, SCN, give it a negative one. The two numbers do not cancel out. They do not have a common factor, so we swap and drop. That 2 must be outside the parentheses or it's incorrect. Next we have calcium. Calcium is a group 2 right here. It's a plus 2. Acetate, again, is in the table E in the polyatomic ion chart. It has two options for how you can write it. Pick one, whichever one you prefer. When we get into organic, you might actually prefer that, but for right now, I bet you prefer that one. So we're going to do C2H3O2, and its oxidation number is negative 1. So they don't cancel out. They don't have a common factor. Swap and drop. 2 has to be outside the parentheses. Next, we have zinc. Zinc is actually here in group 12. It has a plus 2. And then phosphate, again, is in table E. Phosphate is right here, PO4, and it's negative 3, like so. And they uh, do not cancel out. They do not have a common factor, so we swap and drop. Next, we have potassium. Potassium is a group 1. Give it a plus one. Dichromate, again, a polyatomic. Have an awful lot of them on here. And dichromate is first one. Nope, that's chromate. Dichromate is the second one over here. So that, again, in parentheses, Cr2O7. And it is a minus two. The two don't cancel out. They don't have a common factor. You swap and drop. I want to quickly show you one where there is a common factor so you know what to do. We'll do carbon, I did this in class, but 4 oxide. 
So carbon is a plus four. We got that from the name. Oxygen, you look it up, oxygen is a negative two. Of course, you may have that memorized now. They don't cancel each other out, but they do have a common factor. So you could go ahead and swap and drop, but you've got to pull that common factor out. And in this case, that's a two. So we're going to take this away and we're going to turn this one into a two. And that's actually the way we're supposed to name carbon dioxide, that's CO2. So that's what you would do if there was a common factor. All right, next section, is P2O5 considered to be empirical or molecular? Do these subscripts have a common factor? If the answer is no, then it's empirical. And in this case, that answer is no. So we would say empirical. And your reason could simply be it already is the simplest ratio of those elements. Next, how many atoms of each element are present in VOSO for 2H2O? So the O's are everywhere. I'm going to save those for last because they're the hardest. We have vanadium. We have just one. When there's no subscript, we know there's one of them. S, we have just one. Again, no subscript, so there's one of them. Then H, H has not only a subscript, but it's saying we have two waters. So really that's like having two of all of that. So we're going to multiply that through. We're going to distribute that through like you would in math class. So we actually have two times two or four hydrogens. And now for oxygen, that's the tough part. There's one here and four here, so that's five. And then because we have two of all of this, that means we have two more oxygens. So we have a total of seven oxygens. And the last question, how many atoms of each element are present in copper, um, hydrated copper sulfate? So you guys have actually worked with this. That was that blue stuff you dried out. So copper, there's one of them. Sulfur, there's one of them. I'm going to save oxygen for last again because it's hardest. There are five waters. So once again, we're going to distribute that five through. Five times two, or ten hydrogens. And now for the oxygen, the hardest part. There are four oxygens out here, but then five times the one oxygen in water would be five more. So five plus four, we have nine oxygens. And those are the skills you need for the quiz. Good luck.